record now and now we're going to get ready to go on to Facebook because sometimes we get a bit live before we realize we're live. So ah, that's all good. I'll um, just stop swearing right now. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't do that to well, you don't know. Never. Okay, so I'm just making sure. Mm -hmm. Interview Monday. There's a scratchy sound that comes up every so often at the moment. Have you got a headpiece or something that might be getting brushed by your hair? Uh, no, I have somebody standing in the background. Oh, okay, we'll let we them do reno that stuff. <laughs> renovations. Okay, so we should be oh, just nice. about coming on live now. It says it's just... now streaming on my end. Yeah. Just always double check on the old, I double check on my phone to make sure we are actually live. Yeah, I'm deliberately ignoring my phone <laughs> so I don't get distracted. Yeah, there's always a delay too. We are on live. That's awesome. There's always a couple uh -huh. of seconds delay. So if you're trying to look on here and you're trying to look on your phone or somewhere else, it's like, what? It's mm -hmm. like that movie Monkey, you know, when the mouth is moving five seconds after. <laughs> So anyway, welcome, welcome, welcome on this lovely Monday morning, Terry. Thank, Thank you. you so, so much for coming in to um, be our interviewee for today. Um, it's very exciting. So, um, you know, um, you and I met, gosh, gosh, it's not August. even a year ago now. Yeah. It was and August. Just, um, have had this kind of evolving growth journey together and, and really connected um, uh, on a friendship side as well. So it's been amazing. And um, I, I, somebody said to me just recently, oh, but I've lost all my new, my old friends. And I've gone, just make new ones. There's <laughs> a no reason are, for that. <laughs> yeah, that are helping you to build uh -huh. your journey. So, but that's uh -huh. enough about me. So it's about you. So tell, um, tell me a little bit of who you were, to who you are now and um, you know just briefly and then we'll dig into some other stuff yeah absolutely um so i um my journey to the business that i have right now really started when i was a kid quite frankly um when i look back on it now um i grew up in a cattle breeding family so my entire family on particularly my immediate family on my dad's side and half of my mum's side are all entrepreneurs in their own right in that they've all got their own businesses etc and so this whole building your own business and, and that business journey is just it's a part of my DNA and I never actually realized how much it was until the last couple of years yeah. um, so fast forward to when I was high school I went to a boarding school for five years because there was no um, local high school the closest one was like an hour and a half drive from home and who's going to do that every day over gravel roads and all the rest Plus it was a not great school shall we say <laughs> <laughs> We won't send this um, video out publicly then. <laughs> you know, it was a little local country school. Anyway, details. So um, I went from a little one-teacher primary school where I was literally the only person in my grade level for the entire primary school oh, wow. to being in a group of 100 girls. Um, and I launched myself into every opportunity possible. Um, uh, but I, so we did grade eight to grade 12 and about halfway through grade 10, I kind of put my head up and looked around and I was, I'd been happy as can be because I was off in every sports thing going, you know, like there was only two terms in the whole five years. I didn't represent the school in some kind of sport or debating or this or that, or, you know, I was, if it was there, I was in it. And I got to about halfway through grade 10 and realized I didn't have any friends. <laughs> I was oh, wow. so busy doing stuff that it didn't actually worry me that I wasn't connecting on a friendship level with these other people. And I looked around me and right. realised that all these people had these friends and I was like a bit, like that was when the, I started to feel a little bit lonely in a big crowd, right? Mm. I'm like, okay, they know how to talk to each other. I don't. I'm going to go start doing something about it. So I started pulling self-help books out of the library. Um, wow, in year of, 10. In year 10. Yeah, Some of these books had wow. never been borrowed before because this was still the old stamp system. You know, we've got the card and the envelope. I'm, I'm old enough. I earned these. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, so that, I, I did grade 10 in 1990. So it's now been 30 years and I literally haven't actually ever really stopped that personal development journey um, through that entire time. Uh, I have lived overseas a couple of times. I have, um, I've done a degree at uni as, and then 
after I met my husband, he and I made the decision that one of us would be at home to take care of our children. And that was me um, because of the nature of what he was doing at the time. Uh, he had a secure job that he could do and I was too big when I was pregnant to do anything of what was in my job. <laughs> so my focus then for a really long time was on being the one at home to support our children. But I still kept going on that personal development journey and continued to have these micro businesses or part-time jobs or whatever on the side. But it always had to be that family commitments came first and then anything yeah. else had to slip down in underneath that. Yeah, and that's what we do as moms quite often, oh, isn't it? Completely. Yeah. And look, I'm yeah. in eternally grateful that my husband was in a consistent job, care of us financially. No, I didn't have to worry about, I did all the financial management, he did all the financial you know, income creation mm -hmm. stuff, right? <laughs> Um, so then now our youngest is in grade eight, so he's almost 14. And a couple of years ago, I, I kind of popped my head up again. I went, mm, this is actually not really what I want. Um, I didn't hate what we had, but I wasn't fulfilled as a person anymore. I had given so much to my family and all these other things. And now my kids were getting to the age where I could start to pop my head up and look around and look at things that fulfilled me more on the inside. So then yeah. I kicked up that whole personal development journey another level on some other another another coach another mentor worked through another couple of programs and really dug deep into what it is that I love to do that was because when we my husband and I spoke about me starting a business because he knew I didn't want to be an employee for the rest of my life um, it was okay we take the time invest the time and energy and money and find what's really going to drive me yeah. so that this is, like it's it's like literally, if anyone knows that concept of the ikigai, you know, like that, you, your whole purpose of your life, my, my business fits right in the middle of that. And my business is all about helping other people find their purpose. That's what I mm. love to do. Um, so the business name is 10,000 Dreams. Um, and it's because I believe that if we all actually took the time to think about it and, and invest the time and energy in looking at all the dreams that we've actually already achieved, all the other dreams that we want to achieve or have you know, decided that we're not going to pursue you'd have 10,000 easily easily beautiful I love that 10,000 dreams it just kind of evokes stuff anyway so so that's what you do now so mm -hmm. your mm -hmm. business is 10,000 dreams and yep. your business is about helping other people discover what their dreams are absolutely and their purpose. Yep. It's, a, it's a really I, I work primarily with mums in business um, not exclusively, but primarily that's who I resonate with and who I find I've got the best results with. And obviously it's all about, I want to be able to help people as much as like, it's got to be a really combined effort kind of thing. Um, but it's about where people are at a point. We all get to a point and then we want to get to the next level. And, and what I do is I help people, particularly my specialty is about helping them to get clarity on what that next level is for them. Yeah. Um, and then also connecting on the, connecting those people on further to others who have got the, the different skill sets that I don't have, because I'm very mm. much about building networks and and helping everybody to, to lift and rise together. Awesome. And, and tell me, like you talked about um, that you weren't feeling fulfilled, and this is such a common thing for so many women that I talk mm -hmm. to as well. It's like there's something yeah. missing. I don't know what it is. So for you, how was what was it that? How did you find what it was that would start to fulfill you? how you know i know we do personal development and i think on some level most people when you come to this stage we've done it for some time in some mm -hmm. way shape or form but what was the aha that has said to you yes i'm on track where was that probably when my very there's a collection of different things but the one mm -hmm. thing that really was my very first solid affirmation that this business was what i was meant to be doing is that I literally had my first client turn to me during a conversation. So she's a lady who I'd known for about six or eight years before we actually worked together as clients and, and, um, and coach. And about three or four sessions in, she completely off the cuff sent me a message and, like, it was epic. And a part of it was that she thanked me for what I did because I had helped it. I had changed her life. Right. And I still get goosebumps now now her wording was i had changed her life my thing is she changed her life i just helped her realize what it is that she could mm. do to create the change that she was actually looking for yeah because it's not about me doing the work i'm my thing is about getting 
you can think then you can do whatever is required so and so when you got that feedback mm -hmm. um number one you were open to get the feedback and number two in that moment you meant i'm on track yeah that's when i knew that this was the right thing for me to and I, like she was my only client at the time <laughs> this was right at the very very beginning wow. uh, you know and it was and and honestly i've had that about on average about half of my clients end up sending me messages like that and i know that sounds really braggy but it's not it's just no, 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 no. and i don't ask for it i do not I've, I've actually never asked someone just directly to send me a testimonial i give feedback forms and i run workshops and that sort of stuff but, you know this was just off the cuff a private message you know and mm, like i said it's beautiful it's not uncommon with the people that i work with because we're working on stuff that's so important Ah, absolutely, absolutely, and I know the work you do. So, what has been? So, I get what you say. You know, you're doing this personal development, and mm -hmm. then you start. So, it's that action of starting something and you getting the feedback. But you wouldn't get the feedback if you hadn't started it. Mm -hmm. So, what kept you going to start that? What was that? As in, what's what is it that kickstarted me to doing it in the first to, place? To, or, yeah, or what to doing from... that. You know, there was lots of stuff in um, personal development. So what made you decide to take action on that one particular thing? So I think, well, one of the, in terms of a point, like a big turning point for me where I really started to look for what that was, because it's kind of a, for me, there's a couple of steps to answering this question properly. But the first really big signpost for me was I had a friend come and visit me. <clears throat> Excuse me. She came and visited. We hadn't caught up for quite a while. We used to work together. And she'd been through a divorce and separation, etc. while we worked together. So she we'd been through some rough stuff together. Yeah. And she came to visit me. We sat outside. We had this beautiful pergola space. We sat outside for about two, two and a half hours. And we talked and talked and talked and talked and talked. And when she left, she goes, Terry, I feel so much better having had these conversations with you. I just you you inspire me. I leave feeling so much better. I really thank you so much. Yeah. Anyway, which is lovely. I love the fact that I was able to help her. Yes, of course. As she left, I stopped. I, fe I actually felt really drained at that point. And as she left, I stopped and thought about it. And in that entire time, the only question she had asked me was, how are you? Uh -huh. the, the entire conversation, I had been talking to her and she'd been unloading, unpacking and all this sort of stuff in her yeah. brain. And I, had, and I knew that I had really helped her. But I also, that's where I also became conscious of the fact that it was time for me to start moving forward. You know, you mentioned before about the friends that you leave behind in the journey, etc. Yeah. That's okay because we grow. And I had gotten, I had, that's when I, that was really my first thing where I went, okay, I've got to do something. This is something I'm very good at. How do I know? How, yeah. what else can I Beautiful. do? And so then I had a, a lady that I was, uh, she was one of my mentors at the time and she, I floated this idea with her because I'd honestly never considered actually working in the coaching space. I literally, like less than six months ago, I had someone in my immediate family turn around and go, do people pay you for that? Like, who's going to buy that? You know, because my family lived their dreams. You know, my dad and my brothers both, like, came out of the womb breathing cow shit. You know, like, because they're yeah. cattle breeders. <laughs> it's what's in their oh, DNA. Yeah, <laughs> right? I love it. They I can't imagine it. not knowing what to do, what yes. they want to do with their life. You know, so and that's really what I, like, i have always... amazing? Yeah. And so you were open enough to actually see the signs, if you like, yeah. to take some action and mm -hmm. then start um, being open enough to allow the feedback in and i think that's okay. something that's really really important that people forget to do they take mm -hmm. feedback from um not relevant sources which shall we say mm -hmm. like people will say what do you do that for that sort mm -hmm. of thing but tell me what what's um and we all do this what's one of the biggest mistakes you've made along the way in my business journey yeah not being system systemized enough from the very beginning okay and has that changed <laughs> i'm changing it <laughs> <laughs> i hear it so much and I was, the person, I was the person myself that was going i'm not the techie person but you do yeah systemize and um, it otherwise you'll run yourself ragged absolutely um, but okay if you're just at the starting point of that what advice or insight would you give to somebody else who is just starting that and going into that overwhelm position? Because that's quite often what happens. I would I would suggest that you look at which which job to avoid the most. <laughs> 
Start okay. there. Okay. And, yeah. and as soon as you possibly can, and probably be well before you actually feel comfortable of, of, of in actually doing it, outsource it. Right. Or, or get get some sort of help, whether that's investing in some sort of training, whether that's outsourcing that work, whatever it is, but you, you need to, you know, address that issue. We all we all like to kind of ignore the stuff that is a bit ugly, right? Just put it on there. <laughs> <laughs> and tell me, what, what is your thing you avoid the most in your business? Right? Um, the, it's the... It's the nitty gritty background, like um, of, of financial tracking stuff, and that because I've we've, I've bootstrapped this from day dot. We had no, addition. we lived on a single income for most yeah. of like you know most of our married life. <clears throat> so um, I, we didn't have extra set aside that that we could do this. So I've literally you know you make a buck, you, you invest a buck is what I've done all the way through, and I yeah. and. Every so often, I kind of borrow a little bit from the family budget. Um, but what, so, but the, you know, I haven't invested enough time or energy or training or anything into the financial management side of it. And so right. now, I really, that's really, that's yeah, my little. Got to know your numbers. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, got to know your numbers. And absolutely. I, I just want to get out and help people. I don't want to do yeah. the numbers. <laughs> but isn't that such a common thing that um, we have? quite often this desire of that people want to help but it really is a numbers game at the end of the day you can go help and help lots of people but if you're not getting the income that you need to get to sustain yourself you're not going to be able to help those people anymore. exactly exactly yeah. yeah so tell me what is one of the what's the biggest factor so far that has helped and added to your success this far being very conscious of who um, the, the six inches between my ears and who gets to influence that. Oh, okay. Massive. In, like this is it's such a cliche, but mindset is everything, and what and the and what influences our mind is what we allow in. So I have made um, <clears throat> the friend that I spoke about who sat at my house and talked to me for hours on end. I've not ever um, like broken ties with with that person, but I haven't initiated contact again. I've been very conscious of looking at those people who who feed and lift me and who are on an yeah. equal versus those who I who I feel kind of drain me. Um, because they all influence my six inches. That's, you know, if you don't get this straight, mm. nothing else works in your whole business and your whole well, perception, life. Perception is reality too. So, yeah. well, on the line of that, answer this question. Um, what is the hardest thing that you've had to do, uh, the hardest decision, if you like, that you've had to make to do with your business? Choosing between my business and my family. Yeah. Very, and how very do you hard. do that? I look at what's, um, it depends on the situation, but I start with a conversation with my family about what's happening in my business and, and why I want to do what I'm doing um, and then getting a little bit of feedback from them. You know, every so often, you know, my, my kids are 14 and 17. They're not, I don't need to take them to daycare and all those sorts of things anymore. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. have a level of, 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 you know, understanding so I can actually have a conversation with them and go, this is what I want to do and this is why, but if I do that, then I have to not do this. Can we work out something that, that works in the middle? Because often it's about, you know, a training event or something like that that I want yeah. to go to and then you're going to miss something on a family level. Um, you know, and so then we work out something that fits in the middle because you, I, can't, I can't shift when people do their training events if I want to be there. You know, yeah. So yeah, that's that's probably my so, biggest. So so it would be fair to say that it's it's a lot about though that communication is what makes oh, yeah. those decisions easier. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. in, in everything, everything. Yeah. So so um, very lucky to be open and honest enough with your kids. When your kids were younger, you just didn't do the business really. No, kind of, and yeah. I actually I actually sort of actively avoided starting a business when my kids were little because I'm. A little bit more one of these all or nothing sort of people and I knew that if I started something that I was really passionate about that I, that I would end up 
like not neglecting my children, but it would be, you know, and I, it would, I would end up not being the parent that I wanted to be. And in all of my 10,000 dreams that I've got for myself, being a mum was always the, always, always there and always number one. And I always wanted to be a mum who I, I believe, particularly when your kids are little, that kids spell love, T-I-M-E. And we were in the situation where by choosing to live a very simple life, we could survive on a single income. Um, you know, we had a little house and we took very few holidays. I think we've had like three family holidays since we got married. You know, we just chose a really simple life so that we could survive on an income and I could be at home with kids. And that was, um, so yeah, I, I chose to either have little tiny micro businesses and or part-time jobs while they were small so that I had the available time for them. Mm. Um, I love that, Sam. I, I've never heard it before. We spelt love, T-I-M-E. I love that. Mm. Yeah. I thought, if you think about it, little children, most of them do. You know, we've all got, you can all go into the love languages and all the rest of it, but I'm with your children. You know, it's, there's, there's a pretty big soapbox I could jump on this one, actually. Yeah, let's not jump on the soapbox. <laughs> no, you don't need to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I get what you mean. And look, I was a single mom for many years and I actually had to work because I was the only person bringing it in. Absolutely. And um, Of course I, you would. Yeah, you know, you quite often think, oh, my God, I didn't have the time because I literally, in my head at that time, well, God, if I don't put a roof over their head. Um, exactly. But certainly then there was guilt and shame and everything attached to that as well um, because I think we, we do have a feeling that we want to make sure we have the best for our kids. So yeah. what, is, um, what is your biggest fear? Of letting people down. <laughs> Ah, okay. Tell me more. Uh, so I, uh, I was actually just talking about this this morning with my mastermind ladies. Um, I have been a person who has set ridiculously high expectations of myself all along. Yeah. All along. Um, if I use the word, and thanks to learnings from Paul, I don't anymore, but I used to call myself a recovering perfectionist. Um, <laughs> Nothing to recover from. What is perfection anyway? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But, you know, like I'd expect this of other people and I expect like stratosphere of myself. Um, yeah. Isn't that quite and, often what a lot of people do? Oh, yeah. Mm. But, yeah. I, I'm not saying that I'm unusual. <laughs> no, no. But, but by you sharing it, what I mean is by you being yeah. so open and honest and sharing it, you're kind of giving a voice to people who are saying, oh, my God, I thought that was just me. Yeah. And it so isn't like, I really honor that you're being so open and honest about it because we do think, Oh my God, what's wrong with me? I can't get my business right. But yeah, there you are running a business, but you still have this stuff going on. Yeah, of course I do. I got a whole bunch of stuff going on. I'm assuming as they come. And, and honestly, I try to be very open about it because the more that I find that I share, there's certain things about me that I don't share. Um, but in the majority, I'm an, I'm a fairly open book. Um, because what I found is, is that the more that I, 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 I never used to be, I was always very, everything was fine. Everything's wonderful and rosy. There's nothing ever wrong in my life. You know, Yeah. never mind. Yeah, yeah. You know, like you see the little black duck that wanders along and down the bottom of his legs are going like this. <laughs> the proverbial. Yeah. 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 I know. <laughs> and so I was always, you know, I would always put out this front that I was very, and that, that honestly, that was schooled I guess into us as a family because my dad you know started from being for those who have any knowledge of the cattle industry he started with the crossbred herders ended up with um with one of the highest performing in uh, in the now cattle breed in, the, in Australia and that's and he's he started with we were still crossbreeding cattle when I was a, when I was pre um primary school he's done all that in the last 30 or 40 years which in cattle genetics etc and the way that he's grown that business he's had an epic rise but but as kids we were very much you know you behave yourself when you're in public you're representing the business you're representing the family you know and that carried through not that i i guess you know i still have people oh you're robert adams's daughter yeah right <laughs> you know mm. but that it took me a really long time to allow people to see beyond the calm cool yeah it's, uh, and that kind of goes back to inherited beliefs oh yeah quite often 
that mm-hmm. we inherit beliefs from our parents, our environment, mm-hmm. or whatever, and we just think mm-hmm. it's true that it's mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. So how how much work or how long did it take you to be able to come out from behind that and actually allow your vulnerability to come out? Uh, yes. <laughs> I, it, I guess as I, what it came down to was uh, what I needed to do was to build my own self-confidence because then when I could own who I was within me, it didn't worry me what people saw. So once I worked on my own self-confidence, and I went through a fairly intense phase of that with a coach that I took on um, about four or five years ago now, um, and I still go back and revisit that work on it if I need to. Um, but it's about once I owned my own self-confidence and I knew, you know, the things like I could, the fact that I shared with you about the testimonial that I got oh, years ago, if, even if I had received that, I would never share that because I wouldn't, I would be too. I'd be worried about people judging me. You know, it's, I haven't yeah. made up. Thinking you, know? thinking you were bragging or something like that because yeah. we shouldn't. Like, we shouldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I like, can't believe so that. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I'm just looking at the time. It was 26 right. minutes. We've been talking already. <laughs> oh, my, oh, my God. So tell this me. This is um, I, re- I know we do. We get on the phone and it's really cool. Um, <laughs> I want to find out, so what is the silliest thing that somebody's ever said about you? they ever said about me oh um you know I actually I don't know that I can answer that really um honestly it was when like I think one of the things that sticks out the most is when that um it's not necessarily about me but about what I do and like like I said when that family member asked me well who the hell's going to pay for that who's going to do that who wants that help you Mm -hmm. know what I mean like the fact that because in their world they're from the cattle industry Everybody that they associate with is from the cattle industry. And if you're not, if you're in the cattle industry and you don't actually have essentially cash in your veins, you're not ever going to succeed, right? So everybody who they associate with are living the life that they love and is what they dreamed of. So they just don't have this perception of what it's like to not know what you want to do or to be dissatisfied with your work or, you know, all those sorts of things. And, and it's that, but it's, it's about the perception, mm. you know, their perception is, but as everybody just does exactly what everybody knows what they want, first of all, and everybody does what they want, second of all, for yeah. in their entire life. Because yeah. this is how this person is able to live because of the work, that they've, yeah. the work that they put in and the life that they've created, you know. And yeah, it, it took me a long time to realize that I actually I was the black sheep within my family, but in the general society, they were the black sheep. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that's all. and it's so awesome that you can be so aware that look I came from that background they they didn't know anything else yeah. whereas a lot of people will do it the opposite way yeah and then but we still all have stuff going on we still don't yeah. have because if we were so up there with and everything was perfect then we'd be where we say we want to be but we have to to take time and realize that things are happening for us sometimes mm-hmm. we just don't have the ability to see it mm-hmm. <laughs> that's where we come asunder mm-hmm. um, so if Certainly. people wanted to contact you how would they contact you terry uh honestly easiest way is just send me a private message on facey <laughs> i'm more than happy with that um you can contact me through my um i've got the Ten Thousand dreams business page and a website on there there's a contact form on that if people want to Message, uh, get in contact that way um but yeah like i said i don't mind private messages i'm open to having conversations obviously i'm a, I'm a, chatter. <laughs> <laughs> a chatter so um i'm gonna just get ready to finish up for now and i want yeah. to say a huge huge thank you for coming on and having a chat i know that when um you know people hear this they people like to get to know people a little bit more and know that we all have our own stuff going on but we can still be successful and awesome in business at the same time oh absolutely so, and look thank you so much for the opportunity to share because I, I love doing this sort of stuff and i just i'm looking forward to being able to help more people honestly that's and that in, in the, in the mm-hmm. truest sense of the word i love doing what i do um and it's just a matter of how beautiful awesome yeah. well it's bye for now we've got another interview somewhere else <laughs> <laughs> and we'll chat to you soon. Bye for awesome. me. See ya.